Hi SQL folks, welcome to another tutorial from SQL Maestros. Today's topic is the SQL Server substring function. So this week at a client's location, I saw a lot of usage of the substring function and the queries were similar to what I'm showing you in the demo today. After looking at the queries and the workload, I was feeling a bit itchy, specifically when I started looking into the execution plans. And then I explained something to the client and they understood that and they have started making changes. And I thought, why not? It's a good idea. Record a video and share it with all of you, with the community. So what's going wrong with the substring function or why you may want to reconsider it and choose something else or avoid it or maybe at least be aware as to how SQL Server is dealing with the substring function. We are going to use AdventureWorks 2016 for the purpose of demo. Let's do that. We are going to take this table sales order detail. Now I just wrote a very quick script so I couldn't locate a better uh, table. I'm sure there are better tables in AdventureWorks but anyways, we have this attribute here in sales order detail called career tracking number and this table career tracking number has uh, is alphanumeric data so which is good for us uh, to be used for the substring function all right now if we just quickly confirm alphanumeric okay so we do sp help with sales order detail and if you look at career tracking number it is an n varchar data type so this is what we want now look at this query select star from the table where substring and you put the attribute and then what whatever you want to search starting from the first character up to 12 characters and you say equal to and some value i picked it up from one of the records if you write a query like this of course you will get the output let's do that and also turn on the actual execution plan let's do this you get the output you jump over to the execution plan what you are going to see is a clustered index scan. And obviously, until this point, everything seems okay because there is no non-clustered index on career tracking number. But most likely, when you put an attribute in the where clause and you are searching across a large table, most likely you will have an index on this attribute. But before we do that, let me show you another alternate. Instead of substring, I'm using the like operator and the like operator with this uh, query that I've written, which is logically equivalent of this one in sense, because career tracking numbers are, are, are fixed characters like this. So the wildcard character here will actually not make any change or will not have any impact logically. So let's do this. Um, and okay, so with the previous execution with substring, you should take a note of the number of records, which is 12. 12 records and I purposely chose this table because sales order detail is a is a bigger table in comparison to other tables in AdventureWorks. This table has more than 100,000 records and we picked only 12 records out of 100,000 records. To be precise, it has 121,000 records approximately. Now, instead of substring function, we are using the like operator. Let's run this and first see if we get the same output. We get the same output. We have 12 records coming in. We jump over to the execution plan and the execution plan looks identical. Now, you know, this is where the developers in DBS get tricked out. So if I take both of this and execute this, okay, and jump over to the execution plan, what you are going to see uh, is 47% versus 53%. I mean, that's still okay. It's kind of 50% um, approximately for the same for the both the execution plans when you are writing queries like these and when you are considering alternate options this is how you compare performance of one query versus the other now this is a performance comparison from SQL Server optimizers perspective only with the estimates because what you're seeing right now is the estimated plan so the performance difference between the first one and the second one does not seem to be very drastic. They're still around 50%. Now comes the key here. When this query is put into production or somewhere around that point in time when indexing strategies are being designed as to, okay, what indexes are you going to create on this table? 
of course, someone will create an index on career tracking number. Why? Because career tracking number is being used in the where clause. Let's do that. So the query is in production. For example, we are going to create an index on career tracking number. Let's do that. And it's a very simple index with just uh, one attribute, one index key, no include keyword. I know the query has star, etc. So you know what's going to happen. You will just see in a moment. Okay, so let's go and run them again. Okay, now we run this again and execute the first one with substring function. Let's go and execute this. Jump over to the execution plan. What do you see? Take a look at the execution plan. You are going to observe something. Some of you may see, well, Amit, everything looks all good. The index is being used and for the other attributes that we want from the tables, the optimizer is deploying a key lookup. So everything looks okay. But if you take a deeper look, the optimizer is not seeking on the index. Instead, it is scanning the index. And this is where the problem is. No seek happening. Take a note of that. All right. Let's close this and rewrite this query. Of course, we use substring. Now I'm going to run the like version of this with like operator. Let's go and run this. Execute this and we get the same result set all good jump over to the execution plan and on the face of it yes the plan looks same but again if you take a deeper look you will now see that optimizer is actually seeking on the index when you create a non-clustered index on an attribute in most cases you would love that the optimizer seeks on the index because seeking operation on the index which means Traversing the B-tree structure of the index will be the fastest way to get to the data from root to intermediate to leaf level. And these are the things that get overlooked. So a substring is definitely not a good choice when you have the like operator uh, or you might have other, uh, you know, uh, very edge business case or a good tech, solid technical reason as to why you are using substring and why you cannot use like then that might be an exception. But otherwise, be aware that using a function like substring on the attribute on the left hand side of the equality operator will make the query non sargable, right? So non sargable here means that the seeking capability on the index will be lost. And this is exactly what is happening. Now I showed you scan and seek happening here, but what about performance difference? So let's take both of them. And as we did earlier, when the index was not there and now the index is there, let's go and execute. And it is no brainer. You are going to see a drastic performance difference between the two. Jump over to the execution plan and you are going to see that substring cost according to the optimizer is 80% versus 20% for the like operator. And that's purely because of index scan versus index C. So look at the arrows here. Scan is returning how many rows versus this. And look at this here. Okay, look at the number of rows. So take the cursor over here and you will see, as I told you, the number of rows, right? 121317. So scanning means all the data is being read. And here you get exactly what you need, which is actual number of rows 12 estimated was slightly higher, which is fine. But that's that's what that's what is being written 12 versus 121,000 rows out there. Obviously, like wins here, index seek wins here with index scan. So be careful. Many of these T SQL functions uh, make your queries non sargable make your makes your predicates non sargable, which is a bad thing. And it hurts query performance. Hope you enjoyed the video. Share it with your friends and colleagues. Leave a comment. I will come back soon with another video. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.